Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. All right. Hi, 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 everyone. I'm so excited to be making this video. I got this idea um, kind of as a mix of a few things and I was going to make this video in combination with another video but then I decided I have enough to talk about that I could split them up so I won't tell you what that other video is yet but it will be coming soon um, but this video is going to be all of the hidden gems I feel like I've read this year so far. Um, I thought there would be a lot more books on this list, but there isn't. And that tells me that I need to keep reading the smaller authors that I really want to try. So what I'm considering a hidden gem, I have two qualifications and that's it. So within the about 250-ish books I've read so far this year, I have every book that has less than 500 ratings on Goodreads and I rated it four or higher stars. Okay, so this list is personal to me. Are there other books that were under 500? Yes, but I don't like them enough to recommend them and therefore I'm not gonna like drag them in a video because I mean, all of these are smaller authors. You know, if their book has less than 500 ratings, it's not really getting seen. Now, of course that means more than 500 people are reading it because not everybody uses Goodreads, but when we want to gauge like popularity, Goodreads is still a pretty good place to go for that. So I went all the way back to the beginning of the year, like I said, and I'm going to go through all of these books that I think you should give them a try. I will have them all linked down below so you can go right to their Amazon and either get the KU edition or purchase it or put it on a wish list for yourself. I have that all down below. Um, and we're going to dive into these. They are all through all the subgenres that I read. Some of them are from authors who sent me their books to try. Some of them are authors I found on my own. And some are ones who are recommended by you guys. So let's dive in. And the very first one I have to mention is Denial by Ali Marr. Um, Ali Marr uh, was a new author last year and she's only put out a couple novellas so far but I know she well her first book is a book but it's it's like a shorter book but this one is a novella and it's actually about a married couple who is in a BDSM relationship they're in a 24-7 dynamic and the female is actually the dominant in this situation and her and her partner have been together for many years they're like I said they're in a long-term relationship and they enter in kind of this like experiment or like deeper level of submission and trust together whereas the uh submissive is willing to give up his uh you know pleasure for whatever period of time the dominant decides and the reason this is a little bit different than what they've ever done before is that i mean he's basically going to be wearing a cassidy cage a you know what it is. I'm trying to be a little more careful because YouTube has been censoring a couple of my videos and uh, I mean let's be honest it's taken six years for that to happen but you know mama still needs to make her money but a chastity device on himself maybe you can guess what I mean for a long period of time. Now of course it gets cared for carefully so there's no chafing or anything but in the past they have always had like set times where it'd be like, okay, we're going to do this for a week and then that's going to end. But our hero is actually the one who's pushing for this. He really wants to completely submit himself to his partner and not know when the end date is going to be. So there is a key, obviously, an out and he has a safe word, but those are the only two ways out. And what I found so fascinating about this is you guys know I'm fascinated by um, dominance and submission. It's one of my favorite things to read in romance at all different levels, whether it's this 24-7 situation or less than that. And I mean, you're going to see that in this list because a lot of the romances that I found greatly moving will have that. That's not all there is in here if you're not into that, but to me, those are romances that I feel like don't get enough attention because people are afraid or just not interested. It doesn't have to be that you have a fear for it, but you might just not be interested in kink and like that is a-okay, believe me. But I just found this one to be very well thought out. And it's also a good kind of taste test of some darker, well, not even darker, because they have a beautiful marriage, a beautiful relationship that is so much built on trust. And their partnership is really wonderful to see. But man, the games that they kind of play with each other are fascinating. And I loved watching this. There are 
Um, some trigger warnings for this one mostly having to do with different kinky things and including a bit of a darker one at the end, which again, completely consensual, but there is a branding that takes place. I want to give you that warning and you guys know that that is actually usually a like hard limit for myself. I don't love reading that, but the times that I've read it before, it's always been a coercive thing. Like I've read it in very dark romance where it is a claiming or, you know, a master slave situation. And I just, I can't, that's just too far for me. But in this case, again, it really is the submissive who is begging for that level of ownership and the dominant being like, I, I need to see that you really mean this because this, this isn't like a chastity device that can be removed. Like you'll have it forever. So again, it's not as heavy as I just made it sound with that. This is a short, shorter story, but there's so much packed into it. And I just think that uh, Ali Mar deserves so many more eyes on her work and I can't wait to see what else she has coming out. She has some great um, books in her kink, kink talk yet. What's it going to be called? Like kinktopia, whatever the series is going to be. Um, I'm very interested. Okay, then we have one that I was actually shocked had under 500 ratings because this author, I just, I don't understand. Um, this is Megan, Megan by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is the third book in her, uh, man, I don't even remember the name of the series. I didn't write it down on this page, but I was so looking forward to this. There are only two books in this series, um, and there had only been two books in the series for years and years and years. We didn't even know she would write more. And then all of a sudden it popped up on like Goodreads that there was going to be a third book and it was going to be about Megan. Megan, I still don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to say Megan because that's what's in my head. Um, I've never heard it spoken by anyone. If it was Megan, I feel like there would be an E-A in there or an M-E-G-H-A, whatever. I'm going with Megan. And this one is also another kinky book, but this one is a fake dating um, and then it becomes more, and because it's going to become more than a fake dating, um, M Megan has to share with, uh, her partner that she really needs kink in her relationships. She was in a long-term polyamorous relationship where she was a submissive to a, like, couple, and she likes that. Like, she likes sharing with other people. She is, she likes to be, um, she's like a pleasure, uh, submissive like that's she likes to be over pleasured and all these things and being shared with multiple people is something she really loves and that's something that when you are getting into a new relationship and the other person hasn't been involved in uh kink before that's going to be kind of a heavy thing to get into but um our hero is very open to it very interested in learning more about it to see if he does like it because he doesn't know. He's never had a partner who wanted to be dominated and it's very interesting. Also, this hero, this hero, <laughs> this hero is on the spectrum and we actually see uh, a part of the story that was so moving to me is we actually see when he becomes overstimulated at a play party and needs to kind of be removed from it. We see her actually caring for him and I thought that was very beautiful and something I love to see I always talk about this but we don't see it enough I love aftercare absolutely I've even made a video that I think was about a uh, good aftercare but something that doesn't always get shown is the aftercare for the dominant yes absolutely it is the dominant's job to you know praise and cuddle and give aftercare to their submissive especially when they do very intense scenes but sometimes a dominant needs to be told like i wanted you to do what you did you did such a good job thank you for taking me to this place and that just doesn't get shown enough and especially when you have someone who's becoming a new dominant and is maybe doing things to someone that you know they might be liking but they need reassurance that they haven't hurt them and i think there are some good conversations about that in this one so definitely check these out y'all. Okay. Now, all right. Now we step away from kink for just a little bit here. And we have In Like Flynn by Lauren Smith. I love this one. This one was, I listened to the narration of it and, uh, Lauren Smith is also Emma Castle who that's like her dark romance name that she has. 
and she's someone that I love reading her books. But this one is book two in the Pirates of King's Landing. I do recommend possibly that you start with the first book, which did have more than 500 ratings, but I read that one last year. Um, and this one is, the heroine is actually kind of a pirate, and he is going undercover um, to catch her. So anyway, this one has forced proximity. It's kind of a road trip, but on a ship there's pirates, there's swashbuckling, there's running from the law, and yeah, there. this one is so, so fun. I love it so much. And uh, yeah, although I think I just said that this was Roberta. I always forget the back of this novel has, of this specific copy that I have, has the wrong it has the wrong blurb on the back. So this isn't Roberta. This one is, um, Roberta's in the first book. This one is Brianna. This is Brianna and, uh, where is he? Do do do. Where is his name? Cause her, Nicholas. Okay. Nicholas Flynn. That's right. So this is Nicholas who's undercover and then Brianna who is the pirate's daughter. I apologize for that, but I totally forgot. So I was, you know, checking with the back and I'm like, wait, that's right. This is the wrong back. So Roberta is in the first book and Captain Dominic Gray is the hero in that one. But anyway, this was really great. If you're in a historical romance mood, the narration I believe is Shane East and then someone else as well. This is dual narrated, uh, historical gotta love when Shane East shows up. He He's always a winner for me. All right, then we have a spicy little alien romance, and this one was just an absolute delight. Like, I smiled the whole way through. This is another short one, too. It's novella length, but it's just, it's all sweetness, okay? There's, there's nothing angsty or any of that, even though this is a, like, kidnapped by alien story. So this is Jumping the Shark by Ash Raven. I knew nothing about this author. This is a new-to-me author from this year. I saw someone else post this cover, and it just looked so beautiful and, like, sexy. And, like, I love alien romance. I don't read enough of it these days. And I immediately signed up for an arc of this, and I was sent one, and I was like, oh my god, I just... Mm. I loved it so much. So yeah, this one, our heroine is using a dating app. She is trying to, you know, find love. And it has turned out that aliens on other planets have discovered that they can use like human dating apps to find their partners. And then they, you know, they find people that don't have lots of family, that they won't be missed. And they will basically win them over on the app and then like kidnap them. But they offer them so many wonderful things once they bring them to their new world that most of the humans are just like a-okay with being there. But they do have the option of like, if they can't be won over by, you know, by their person, they can, they can go home. You know, like it's a kidnapping, but also they won't like force you forever. I don't know. But this one, our heroine, she doesn't really have much waiting for her back home. And when she meets her new shark daddy... <laughs> who wants her to be his mate, she is just, she's totally in. And they have some kinks that they share that are the same. He has two dick, he's a two dicked shark. And there's just lots of swoony aftercare and loving, sexy times. Like this one was just so cute. So if you love alien romance and you like it spicy, this one is for you. All right, now we have a more emotional one. And this one is also an erotic romance. Like I said, a lot of erotic romance don't get read as much as other ones. So that's why these are on my hidden gems. And they're hidden gems because I love erotic romance. So there you go. But this one was actually one that was picked for my Patreon. And it was The Escort's Tale by MJ Edwards. And this book is just kind of a flash in the pan, complete surprise to me. And I loved it so much because this is an MMF and it is an escort, obviously, by the title. And he is bisexual and he's been hired for all types of things in all types of situations. And he gets um, a referral to this married couple who is having some intimacy issues. The hero had an accident. He's a very wealthy billionaire. Him and his wife are these beautiful, gorgeous couple who had all the world in front of them and our hero hurt his spine. And so he is a paraplegic. He is paralyzed from the waist down and like he can still get hard and get aroused but he can't feel it himself and so him and his wife who had a very active and healthy sex life it's now 
you know, they just can't connect the same way. And so our hero, or, you know, the hero of that couple, he doesn't want his wife to go without pleasure. But for him, it's very difficult to do. You know, he knows his wife wants to remain faithful to him and he doesn't want her to feel guilty about finding her pleasure. So they get referred to, um, they get referred to this escort who is willing to work with married couples. And he often will do like cuckold situations. So he gets asked to do this. But once he meets this couple and he understands why he's there to pleasure the wife and have sex with her in front of her husband, he realizes that he can help them or he wants to try. So yes, their first experience there together and it's great. And they ask him to come back again, but he wants to involve the husband somehow. And so that's what we see throughout this. And very quickly, this couple, which our hero, he, the hero and the married couple, he's, you know, always thought he was straight. He's been with his wife, his partner for a long time. He's always been with women, but he is very attracted to this man who is fucking his wife. And as he gets asked to like be a part of it, him and his wife actually ask him to be their boyfriend. Like they want to exclusively date him. And he just isn't sure because he's like, am I just here, you know, to be the cock that you use or are you, am I here for me? So anyway, I don't want to give away the whole story, but you know, this is a bisexual awakening. This is a, you know, married couple who very much love each other and they're having problems in a certain way. And I will tell you that there are scenes where they're all together eventually. And there are scenes that like, it's just so intimate, you know, cause we have a hero who does need help and he's always been so strong and capable. He was on top of the world. He's that billionaire we read about in all these stories. And now he's lost his ability to walk and his ability, what he feels to have sex with his wife, which are the two things that made him feel like a man. And now they're gone. And when our escort gets brought in, and is able to give some of those things back to this couple, it was very beautiful. So for this being a shorter novel, it was just glorious. And this is actually written by a man and the POV is exclusively from the escort the whole time, which I thought was a very interesting choice. This doesn't switch POVs, it's in his the whole time. And we see his emotions and what he's feeling as he falls in love with the two of them. And I was so moved by this story. Like, guys, if you love MMF, if you like erotic romance, if you even don't, I highly recommend this. And I have to tell you, I was so devastated when I discovered that there was only two, like, romance novels that this author has written. He's written, I think, some, like, nonfiction things and then wrote these, like, two erotic novels under a different name. And he's never written anything else. I cannot tell you how devastated that I am that that's the case because... I loved reading how he wrote a man and I loved how he wrote this MMF and it still felt so intimate and beautiful and like, it was fantastic. So highly recommend. Okay, then we have Sir Yes Sir by L.L. Ash. This is book three in the uh, Sophisticated Seduction series. And I was sent an arc by this author because I really loved him and uh the teacher is that what the second one's called man it's been a long time but they're none of them are connected um directly they're just they're in the same series but they're not directly connected um teach me is the second one so him is a best friend's dad teach me is a professor and the a graduate student and then sir yes sir is this one so they're all forbidden age gaps and this one is actually a dad's best friend and a former uh, military guy who is actually injured in the beginning of this and he moves in with his friend um, who used to be in the military with him because he doesn't have any of his own family and he needs a place to convalesce until he's ready to go back, which again, he's former military because we find out pretty early on in this, he's not gonna be able to go back again because of the uh, PTSD as well as the physical changes that have happened through his injury that he had. But he ends up staying in the guest room of their home for a little while and they also have a daughter who I believe she's 22, 21, 22, and she still lives 
at home mostly because her parents like want her to and she works for her dad's business and she's always been kind of attracted to this older you know her dad's friend um, and now he's living in her home so this is a complex yet beautiful romance between the two of them definitely worth it and I was surprised that this one had under 500 but I feel like not a lot of people know about LL Ash and I just I want you to give this one a try everybody it's so good then we have Till All the Seas Run Dry by Eliza MacArthur. This was book two in the Elements of Pining series. This is a series that is paranormal and the first one very much feels like a uh, Charlie retelling, that's what everyone says, from Twilight and it definitely does. That was Hank, uh, Soft Lanel Hank was the first one. So uh, Till All the Seas Run Dry is a vampire and a silky romance and at the very end of soft flannel Hank. Um, I believe Callum is the name of the hero. It's been a while since I've read this one. He, Callum kind of appears to be a villain in the first book. Spoiler for that one. You'll find out by the end that there was some misunderstandings there. And at the end of that book, this Silky, who I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry. Who hasn't been able to go in the water for years because Callan actually stole her skin and he doesn't know how important it was he didn't even know that she was a silky when they fell in love it was hundreds of years ago actually I think maybe almost a thousand it's been years and they didn't fully know who each other was when they fell in love and there was something that split them apart and they like both believed the other was dead. So at the end of Soft Lionel Hank, they discover they aren't. But now, can they ever be together again after all these years and after the hurt that was done? Can they ever find forgiveness in each other and give this a try? Well, this is a Faded Mate's tale, so you'll see how it goes. But I found this to be fascinating. It was so unique. I, of course it has tropes we've seen before, but I've never read anything quite like this before. And I think Eliza MacArthur is doing some amazing things, really. I, all three books of hers I've read, I've felt that way. She also has a Highlander um, romance, which came out last year, I think, still. I think it was near the end of the year last year. And then there was Soft Lionel Hank was her first book and then this one and I just think she's an author that is very like under appreciated in a lot of ways like I really really do okay then we have Bourbon Runaway by Rose Walker this is one I've talked about in quite a few videos now I'd love for you to try especially if you love kind of the uh mountainish type of man we have in uh I don't not necessarily like a disabled hero, but we have a, you know, he has a walking aid, sometimes uses a cane. His leg was very much injured in a car accident. And so it like bothers him when he uses it too much. So he considers himself like a cripple or injured, but you know, it's more of like a feeling that he has than completely in actuality, but that's okay. Like we, we can have slight disabilities or slight things keeping us from doing something. It doesn't have to be all the way in or out, right? But he does use a cane at different times. And this, of course, is a runaway bride romance. We have our heroine who is set to get married and then she discovers some things about her husband and when she tries to end the wedding, he like hits her and is like, bitch, you're going to walk down the aisle. You're not going to embarrass me. And she's like, <laughs> no, it's not happening. And just as he, you know, this, this awful uh, fiance is berating her this way, um, our hero has showed up at this wedding and he is just kind of slipping in at the end or he's slipping in right before it was supposed to begin because this woman getting married was his dead brother's girlfriend when they were young and there's just always been kind of a weird vibe between them since then and he's always stayed away from her he stayed away from everyone ever since his brother had died all those years ago he has stayed up on his mountain he's actually a like carpenter and he makes um specialty furniture and everything it's really cool. I, I have a friend who makes specialty furniture and you can make a lot of money doing that, but also it's very particular work. It's very intense. But our heroine, you know, this guy witnesses this happen and he steps in and he's like, dude, you ain't hitting this girl. 
and she's just so overwhelmed and she already has a bag packed because they were supposed to leave for their honeymoon right away and she ends up jumping in his truck with him and he takes her to his cabin on the like edge of the mountain for the weekend and it's very awkward because they haven't spoken in so many years and there's so many things that just haven't been said there's a lot of memories about his younger brother that he doesn't want to face and now she's living there um so yeah this one had a lot of complex and emotional feelings but it was really good and the next one in that series is coming in july and that one's going to be a vegas wedding because our heroine has a pretty extensive family she has siblings and then she also was like kind of adopted into a family too so there's a lot going on there then we have forgive me for my sins by a anders which fan fantastic okay so good so this is a priest romance <laughs> but it is one of the lower angst ones that I've read which you wouldn't believe because there also is cheating in in this book but it's hard to explain so this was a debut book from A. Anders and I saw that it was a priest romance and it was a new to me author and I was like let's give it a go I want to try it I, I do like taboo romance that way and I mean it's still taboo because he is a priest he isn't supposed to be with anyone he has become a priest to kind of atone for his past you know he was very uh, what's the word I'm looking for he was very sexual in his past he promiscuous that's what I was looking for but now he's given his life to God and he is a new a priest in this parish he's not the head in this area but like he's taking on a new church and what we discover at the very beginning of this book literally the first line is our heroine finding out her husband is cheating on her now she's married to the significantly older man and she's his trophy wife um she has money in her own right so she's the type of trophy wife that like she would be fine on her own. She didn't need him, but he wooed her and won her and then married her and she was supposed to be an ornament and just do what she's told and just be there. And she's not going to put up with that. She now has proof he's cheating on her. She has camera footage of it happening and she's ready to get out of this marriage. So she ends up going to church, uh, mass which she hasn't been to in a while and she actually meets this new priest and she's very attracted to him and she kind of decides that she wants to have an affair with him before she even really knows him too well um because she wants revenge against like her husband too and she's like what would embarrass him more than if I had an affair myself and I did it with a priest like that is kind of her game when she starts so she ends up getting put on this committee for a charity and working with the priest and as they get to know each other they genuinely are falling for each other. Now, what I loved about this is once our priest decides to be with her, this book doesn't have really the struggle of if he should continue to be a priest or not. He very much is like, if I've fallen in love with a woman more than I'm in love with this position, more than I'm in love with God, as it were, then I shouldn't be doing it because I'm not doing it to the fullest which seems like pretty clear logic to me. And this woman genuinely loves him too. This isn't just a fling to her like she thought it would be. She genuinely loves him. So I've said enough. You'll get it. It is some kinkiness in here. It is forbidden. There's the cheating aspect. But it's one of the kinds where like it's very clear that her husband's a complete asshole. He's abusive. He's cheating. She just needs to find a way to get out of the marriage and, you know, and she's fallen in love with this priest, which I love. So I really liked this. If other priest romances have seemed too taboo for you or they make you uncomfortable, this was a good one because I don't feel that it slammed religion and I don't feel that it was overly sacrilege like some can be. I mean, it's still kind of, it. I know, I, I'm not here to nitpick. I'm just saying if some of them have been too intense for you or you're like, this is, this one, you know, as not being a Catholic, but being a Christian who <laughs> reads spicy romance, we know. I wasn't squirming because of the taboo nature of it. I don't know another way to say it, but I think it was great. Support a new author. She will have more books coming in this series soon. Um, it's actually a about like a group of friends who all used to be, um, I believe they all used to be kind of pretty naughty, like in the same group and they've all are trying to clean it up I can't I don't even know but it's a group of friends and so um the hero was one of the friends in this and he just happened to be the priest and now we're gonna meet 
another one and they're all going to be like taboo in some way. So they won't all be like religious bent to them. But I thought it was great and it really deserves more reads. It was a great time. Okay, now we have Brutal Vows by Darcy McQueen. This book was really a good time, okay, for sure. I read this during the Mafia Romance Readathon, and it has been on my TBR for ages, and I was very interested. This one actually has some Mafia cowboy going on. Um, we have our hero, um, sorry, I just need to double check, it's been a while, Mick, um, and we have Cassidy, although that's not their names for real. They're both going by hidden identities. So we have um, the heroine show up at this ranch and Mick can tell she's not who she says she is. He knows that Cassidy's not who she said she is, but she showed up there with her horse in a, in a trailer and she needs a place to stay. And she's not planning to stay for long, but she needs a place to stay for now. And so he... Um, has always tried to hide, he's been hiding his identity because he had to leave the mafia when his old boss uh, literally shot him in the back and he barely survived. And he started this farm, but nobody knows that he like owns it. He pretends to be a worker on it, but it's really his ranch, but he's trying to stay low key. And so when this woman comes and he can tell that she's on the run from something, there's this in between because he's like having a woman where someone's looking for her may bring attention to my ranch that I don't want to but she showed up with this horse needs a place to board the horse she's stolen the trailer and the truck and we don't know how she ended up here or whatever and Cassidy doesn't want to tell because she is on the run from someone so she happens to be on the run from an abusive fiance who I'm just going to tell you because it's what completely won me over to this her horse is her only friend she does like I believe she does jumping and shows with her and her horse is her only friend she's been able to keep her family is very controlling she's going to be forced into this arranged marriage and she was willing to do it she was willing to do what her parents wanted her to but then she overheard her parents and her fiance discussing the fact that while they're on their honeymoon they were going to have the horse put down they were going to kill her only friend so that they didn't have to deal with the horse anymore and also she wouldn't need to be training and riding and doing everything she was going to be the perfect little wife for them and when she hears that she's like to all of it and is like no way i was willing to do whatever you wanted be the dutiful daughter be a dutiful wife but you're trying to take away my only friend and the only joy i have no so that's why she went on the run she stole the truck in the trailer and she stole her horse and she was like i don't know where we're gonna hide but I'm getting out of here. So that's all that I'll say. She has that secret, which in my opinion, doesn't seem to be a better reason to run than they were going to try to kill your horse. And then we have Mick who's trying to keep his sanctuary safe and free. But when he sees this woman and sees the trouble she's in, he's like, damn it, I'm getting pulled back in because I can't let this stand. There was also a very sweet and grumpy bodyguard type that's there who actually had left the mafia with Mick as well. So I just really love this and there is three books in this series so far. It's called Vows and Vendettas and I will absolutely be continuing. I don't think they all will be on this branch from what the author has told me but the author actually sent me these um, and I finally got around to it. I'm sad that it took me so long because I love this and I will definitely be continuing the series for sure. So definitely get this down below and support this author. If you're my mafia lovers, if you love a mafia cowboy, there it is for you. Okay, then we have The Pleasure Protocol. I won't talk about this one too much because I've literally talked about it in like the last four or five videos that I've done and I've put it all over the place. But this is an escort romance and it's an escort and a billionaire and there is some pet play. There is lots of kinky fun times. There's kink parties. There is, um, yeah, it starts out where his normal escort can't 
join him for an event and so he gets Corinne gets asked to join him and so she does and they find that they click together very well very soon she becomes his regular escort that he's working with now and we see feelings start to grow between client and escort and there's lots of fun beautiful kinky things in here and I just loved it and this is two new authors they're friends and this is Darcy Romaine and Kat Alexander they did send me this book I got a little box with some good fun stuff in it and I was riveted by this book. I love the kind of stuff that's in here and it needs more love for my erotic romance readers. This was great. And then the last one that is a hidden gem for me isn't a new to me author at all. I've read so many of her books but this particular series just doesn't get enough reading and I know it's because this one is also an erotic romance but you can read this one as a standalone and it's called Her Villain by S.M. La Violette. This is part of the Victorian Decadent series. Now as I said this one is I think book uh, five or six in the series and it is about a completely new couple. This one is an MF. A lot of the other cup there is throuples in this. There is um, different dynamics, sexual dynamics in it. There are a lot of sex workers in this series and that is what this one is as well. Um, our heroine, she's only been a sex worker for about nine months since her father died. She's had no other recourse, no money was left for her. She didn't have any prospects and so she's planning to just do it until she earns enough money that she can move to the United States. That's what she wants to do. Um, she's in England doing this but then the brothel where she's working has to close because the owner has made some bad financial decisions and put them in a bit of a pickle and that's putting it lightly and then all the money that she's been saving up gets stolen so what's a girl to do and then we have our hero who is a psychopath and a assassin and has some missions that he gets sent on and he is looking for a sex worker for the night and he goes to this brothel which he's told is a good one as it were and he discovers it's closed and the only one hanging around is our heroine who's there trying to get money from the owner um and he's like i'll offer for you and she's like what and he's like well you're the only one here you're pretty come home with me i'll pay you well and so she's desperate so she agrees to go with him and while she's there, they keep negotiating for different things. It's very, it's very clinical in the beginning. Because again, he's a psychopath. So the way that he's thinking about everything, it's only about his pleasure. He obviously doesn't want to hurt her, but not because he has feelings, but because he's like, oh, it's messy when you hurt them. Like all that kind of like creepy vibes you get, right? And she decides that he has a nice home. It's warm. He's feeding her. She wants to try to see if he'll make her, her his mistress for a while so that she can earn money and have a place to stay and not have to be on the street. And he agrees to keep her for the weekend. They, you know, going to have sex some more. But he's planning to kick her out at the end of the weekend. Maybe give her an extra tip, but he's like, I don't have time for this. Move it along. But the second night that she's there, he also has very regimented times that he does things. So it's not time to have sex yet. They have some time they need to fill up. Um, they end up playing a game of chess. And this is where the book really takes a turn and where I was just riveted. I'm always riveted in her books, but this one I was like, whoa. Um, they play this game of chess and he wins. And he's like, you let me win. And she's like, no, no. And he's like, you're lying. Tell me the truth. I don't like liars. And she's like, I find that men don't like when I beat them. And he's like, well, that's lying though. Play it the right way. I, if I lose, I lose. Play it the right way. So she's like, okay. So they play again and she beats him in like 10 moves or something. And he laughs. And she's kind of like startled that he like laughed at her. And from her beating him at this chess game, he decides to keep her for the rest of the time he's here for his mission, which is I think like a month or two or something like that and he'll pay her for her time being there if she will stay out of his way during the day play chess with him and have sex with him that's what he wants and 
we're on our way to a love for sure. So this was fascinating. He has those parts of a psychopath who's never cared about someone before, but now having someone in his life that he's like, well, I don't care about her, but I don't want her to be unhappy. And all these little things he starts doing to try to make her happy show us as he's like falling deeper for her. So this is another one I've been talking about all the time. I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. I want you to read it so badly. Um, and I, none of those books get enough love in my opinion. And again, this is like number five or six in the series. You can start with this one. The other characters in other series are only partially mentioned, whereas some of the earlier books she's written, you do kind of want to read them in order just because of how things unfold. But this one, and she says in her author's note that she's always wanted to write a psychopath. And so there's only like vague connections to the other. So you can just read this as a standalone and decide if you like it. So there you go. Those are all the hidden gems I've read so far this year. Let me know what hidden gems you found so maybe I can check them out. Um, I will tell you now, the other video I'm planning to make that led me to this is I'm going to be making a video that is a um, all of the new to me authors I did read. So that was the thing is like a lot of these authors fit onto that list, but I do have almost 50 new to me authors I've read this year. And so I'm going to put that in its own video. So make sure you subscribe, like this video and hit the bell if you want to be notified when that video goes up. I also put up uh, videos three to four times a week with recommendations. So definitely check that out. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye.